Number 16 then from the 2016 SQA Advanced Tire Mathematics of Mechanics. Here we go. Projectile motion for 8 marks. The first three marks is to derive this coordinate equation for the projectile motion. Well, what does it say? A ball is projected from horizontal ground with an initial speed of v at an angle of theta, angle of evasion of theta. It passes through a point x metres horizontally and y metres above, so that's just like saying the coordinates. It's a coordinate equation you want. So what have you got? Well, there's two components to that velocity. Along the way, you've got beside the angle v cos theta. Up the way, you've got away from the angle v sin theta. And the two motions are independent of each other, and the one across the way is constant motion. So there you've just got s equals ut, only it's called x across the way, and the speed is v cos theta times t. Up and down the way, you've got s equals ut plus a half a t squared, because there's an acceleration involved. But up the way, we're calling it y, and the speed up the way is v sin theta times t. But the acceleration is downwards, though, so minus a half g t squared. Getting these two gets the first mark. You could put a B. That's horizontal and that's vertical. Now in the marking scheme it also gives another way of getting this first mark which involves using calculus and repeated integrations by stating, but you would never do this because it's just ridiculous, by stating that, but they don't imply you should do it either, that across the way there's no acceleration so that the second derivative is zero and up the way there is an acceleration, negative g, so the second derivative comes to, of y comes to negative g, and then integrating twice, bringing in the constants and so on, until you end up with these, but you wouldn't, you'd be just going with these from that. Now to get this equation, I need to tie them together. The thing that I can tie them together with is t, I can use that for a substitution. If you rearrange that, read to t, t equals, t equals x over v cos theta, which means if you put it into the, this one, you'll have this. You'll have v sine theta times, and t is going to be replaced by x over v cos theta, minus a half g, and that's going to be replaced by x over v cos theta. No, bring it over just a little bit. The v's cancel, sine over cos is tan, so that's x tan theta, minus, I'll put the squared in. Now what have we got on top? We've got a g and an x squared. Underneath is a 2 and a v squared, but it's also times 1 over cos squared theta. But that can be replaced. It tells you what to replace it with anyway. It tells you about sec squared and so on, but you can just use this. Sin squared plus cos squared is 1, if you don't remember them. So if you divide them both by cos squareds, you've got 1 over cos squared equals, and that's tan squared plus 1. So 1 plus tan squared theta. So the second mark was for rearranging that to carry out the substitution and the third mark was just for simplifying it to get this result. Now, part B then. It gives you two positions of this ball and asks you for this angle of projection here for five marks. Now the first thing to notice is there's no point in thinking, oh wait, if I differentiate that and I get dy by dx, because after all that will be the gradient, then you can find the gradient at the start when x is zero. Job done. But if you differentiate that, you'll end up with, this term would be tan theta, no mention of x, this term will still have an x in it, because it'll still be 2x, and when you make x equals to zero, that new term will disappear, and all you're going to be left with is dy by dx equals tan theta, which you knew anyway and doesn't help you at all. So, I'll just have to put in the information and get simultaneous equations. So it says, it's at a height of h when it's travelled 4h. I've got another equation here. And it'll still be at a height of h when it's gone a further h, that'll be now 5h. So I'll just have to pop them into that tediously. So for the first one h will equal 4h tan theta minus, and that'll be 16h squared. And I'll just leave it that way to keep the two things the same. So 16gh squared 
over 2 v squared times 1 plus tan squared theta. Remember, theta is just a constant. That's the angle of projection. Theta is not the angle at each of the points. This one is still at height h, but that'll be 5h tan theta. Minus this time by 25h squared. Don't forget that, vg. Over 2v squared times 1 plus tan squared theta. Now, according to the Martin scheme, by putting those two in, that gives you one mark. Now, in the marking scheme, if you look at that, there's a whole load of algebraic manipulation to get down to the final mark, which is tan, what does tan theta equal? And I don't know why they do that, because there's a fairly quick and simple way to get from here to the answer, because these terms match exactly term for term. In fact, the only nasty one is this bundle here, but this bundle here only differ, differ numerically in the 16 and the 25. So, if I do 25 of this equation, if you do 25 of equation 1 and take away 16 of equation 2, that bundle will disappear and you just have a nice wee bundle here left. So we'll do that. So, 25 of that, take away 16 of that, will leave you 9 of the h. 25 of that is 100, minus 16 of that is 80, it leaves you 20 of the h tan thetas. And the whole point of this plan was 25 times 16, and 16 times 25 means these two terms are numerically identical, and so we subtract them, they disappear. So finally then I've got tan theta equals, take that across and divide, 9h over 20h, which I didn't actually need to do, so I'll just put here 9 upon 20. So there you go. Theta is inverse tan, 9 upon 20. And if you pop that into your calculator, that means you get the angle of projection is 24.227 and so on. So there you go. Theta equals 24.2 degrees. And the thing is, there's four marks for this in the marking scheme because they've got some longer convoluted way of trying to solve that pair of simultaneous equations. First of all, by equating them and then tidying it up and then getting rid of certain variables, which you didn't need to do because those terms were identical and they would disappear as soon as you could make the coefficients the same. I suppose you'd have to say this plan, that's a definitely one mark. But as soon as you've done that, you've got the final answer, haven't you? So there's another two marks somewhere. So maybe the, the plan would have been you get a mark for your plan and then that. But then where's the other marks? Maybe you get two marks for your plan then. And one for doing it and one for carrying it out. Who knows? So it was quite quick this way. Now, there is another way that the path's a parabola. If you've got two points in a parabola, that'll be sufficient to determine it because you know the path of this parabola must look like that and you've got these two points on it and a parabola of this form that passes through the origin must have the form of y equals something x squared plus something x because there's no constant term at the end. And so you could form two equations from this. So you'd have h equals a times, that's 16 a h squared plus, same thing, 4bh, and same with this one, h equals this time it's 25a h squared plus 5bh. You've got these two equations. So this way it was, you got a mark for realising the form of the equation, the parabola must be this since it passes through the origin. There was a mark for forming these two, I think. No, it wasn't. It was for doing things with this afterwards. I just have to put it down for this. I'll get into that first, actually. So I'll do 5 of 1. If you do 5 of 1 minus 4 of b of 2, you'd have this. 5 taken by 4 is still h. 5 of them is 80. Take away 100 is minus 20 a h squared. And of course, that disappears. So taking that across and dividing, because you know h isn't zero, so you can do that, gives you eight, hmm, minus 20 a h equals 1. So a is going to be 1 over 20 h. Similarly, 
to get rid of a, I'm going to do 25 of 1 minus 16 of 2. Notice it's longer than that other one. Which will give me then 25 take away 16 is 9h. They disappear, that was the whole point. And that's going to be 100 minus 80 this time is 20h. I mean, bh. So from this one, taking that across and dividing, b is 9 upon 20. I think that was our next mark there. So now you've got the equation. y equals negative 1 upon 20h x squared plus 9 upon 20x. And then you can find the angle at the start just by differentiating it. This time you can and putting x equals to 0. So the gradient will be dy by dx, which will be negative 1 tenth of h times x plus 9, 9 twentieths. And of course, when x is 0, that term disappears and you've got the gradient equals 9 upon 20 as before. So times theta is 9 upon 20. So theta is, as before, 24.2 degrees. So differentiating was one mark and then equating it at 0 gives you the final mark. And I missed out the third mark, which was for finding the final form of y equals just before you differentiated.